Red shift here, doing my part to shift perceptions out of the pink and into the red. I think everyone should start shopping locally instead of buying stuff from multinational corporations. You should buy stuff from multinational corporations as little as possible. Now, you may complain and say that local products are way more expensive, and I'll say, yeah, they are, but so what? You'll be forced to become more frugal and therefore less wasteful, and this will make it so that you'll be able to live a good standard of living even though what you're buying is more expensive. You know, you'll be able to pay for it by more frugality, you know, less wastefulness. You know, maybe you buy locally, locally made soap and take faster showers and therefore waste less soap. Maybe you buy locally made toothpaste and use less toothpaste so the tube lasts longer so you don't end up spending more money in the long run because you're using less and therefore you're having to buy a new tube less often than you were back when you're buying a cheaper brand like Crest or Colgate. So then you can afford to buy the more expensive local brand. You know, maybe you buy local honey and use it less often so that it lasts longer. You get the idea. You'd be more frugal, you'd be less wasteful, and the result is that you're, you know, if you're more frugal and less wasteful, then the result is that you're able to buy more expensive products without spending more money in the long run. And another side effect of this is not just funding local people, and thereby keeping the money more in-house, because, you know, when they, when local people have more money, they're going to spend more money. If, if you have a small business, you know, in the area, then they're going to be more likely to shop at your place they'll, or they'll shop at somebody else's local business. And then that person will have more money and then he'll shop at your business or whatever, you know, or, or at the very least, they'll shop at the multinational corporations places in your area more. And therefore those those particular locations of that multinational corporation's business will have to employ more people, so then your area will be richer, there'll be more jobs and stuff. You know, you want to keep the money in-house that is in your area, in your city or your region or your state. You know, you're, and you're also withdrawing money from multinational corporations. You're, you're taking money away from them when you're spending it on local people instead of on, on multinational corporations, you know. Um, you know, these Illumina these companies, these multinational co corporations like, you know, Unilever and Johnson and & Johnson and, you know, News Corp and, and Disney and all of them, they're all Satanist Illuminati scumbags who participate in orgies and kill children. Um, you know, just listen to that interview with Ronald Bernard. They offered to let him into the Illuminati, but when he found out he had to kill a child to do so, he refused. And he said that up until then, though, they had, like, showed him, you know, increasingly more and more of the Illuminati, including, like, that they have orgies and stuff like that. And, and so, and he grew up, like, really, like, he was an abused child and stuff, and that's why he, ha he up until then, had, like, almost no conscience, which is why they offered for him to join the Illuminati, you see? So, like, they really are these scumbags, if you believe Ronald Bernard and other people. Like that girl who talked about how, like, she was given by her grandmother to, you know, rich people and stuff, and they raped her and, and got her pregnant and killed her child and all this stuff. Like, there's multiple individual, you know, accounts of unrelated people who all say similar stuff. You know, that the elites are, are Satanist, you know, scumbags of, of a murderous nature, you know? So this is not just, you know, conjecture on my part. I've listened to the accounts, and, and I believe them. I don't believe all the accounts. Those two kids, um, what was it, the Franklin thing? Uh, I can't remember what it was, but there was two much younger kids who claimed to have been raped and stuff, and, and I, don't, I don't believe them. I think they were coached into it or whatever because their expressions, the way they talk, and, and they're smiling, and it just doesn't seem like they've been traumatized at all. But that one girl, that 15-year-old girl, she had that thousand-yard st yard stare, you know, of the truly traumatized, so I totally believe her. Ronald Bernard is quite believable as well. He started actually crying in the interview, you know, and there was no cuts or anything. It was just an unedited interview. And, you know, he was actually crying. You could see the tears running down his face. So, you know, guys are not good actors. Even professional guy actors can't just make themselves cry on demand. So I totally believe him. But anyway, so yeah, these, these corporations, they're filled with Illuminati Satanist scumbags who, you know, rape and kill. They're, they're monsters, you know. And they all promote feminism. Feminism's all in their commercials. You know, and miscegenation too. By buying locally, you can stop funding feminism and multiculturalism and miscegenation and liberalism. Don't let food go bad, don't overeat, buy fewer crappy movies, go to the theater less often, always clean your plate, don't go faster in your car than you have to, in other words, don't waste gasoline, be frugal, be more frugal, and you'll have extra money to buy locally. Now you may say that maybe those local people may just as, may just as easily be liberal as well, so what's the difference between buying from a local liberal or from buying from a liberal multinational corporation? 
Well, there's actually a huge difference. One of the differences is that the local liberal who's selling honey or whatever is probably a liberal out of ignorance, whereas the elites are promoting feminism and liberalism and socialism and multiculturalism and miscegenation out of a desire to intentionally enslave everybody. You know, it's, it's quite different if you're a liberal out of naive ignorance and well intentions versus being a liberal because you're a psychopath and you want to enslave everybody. You know, I'd much rather buy a product from a liberal who is well-intentioned than buy a product from a liberal corporation that has pure evil intentions and does not use its incredibly huge power to convince the government to stop waging so many unjust and unfruitful wars. I mean, if anybody could stop the government from waging all those wars, it's a conglomeration of, it's a, it's the collection of, you know, the multinational corporations, you know. If, if Unilever and Johnson and & Johnson and News Corp and Disney and all the rest of them, wanted to get, not even all of them, just like a bunch of them, let's say just five or ten of those huge corporations decide to get together and try to force the government to stop waging so many wars, you don't think they'd be successful? Of course they would be. They, they get their way in everything else. They, that too, you know, like that g good old Schnopter, um Rothschild or whatever her name is. Like that chick said, you know, if my, if my sons wanted there to be no wars, there would be no wars. Same thing. If the corporations wanted there to be no wars, there would be no wars. So they're completely responsible for the wars as well. And even if you don't believe that, they're not even trying to stop the wars. So, you know, another difference is that if you restrict yourself to buying locally, then you might be bothered by funding liberals who sell local things. And this will push you to move to a more conservative state so that any local products that you buy there will be sold by conservatives. And thus, you'll not only be refusing to fund the evil multinational corporations, but you'll also be funding conservatives, local conservatives. And then you'll be funding wise people who probably share your moral values as well, not just your political views. And you'll be doing that instead of giving your hard-earned dollars to faceless liberal corporations that are truly wicked or faceless corporations that pretend to be conservative, like, you know, Fox News. And when you spend money on honey or soap or whatever else that is made locally in your city, then you're making that person richer. And when that person is richer, they eat out at restaurants in the area. And maybe you own a restaurant, they'll visit your restaurant more often, thus giving you those dollars right back. Or they'll spend the, that, the money that they got from you on... Or they'll spend their money that they got from, from you buying their product um, They'll spend that money on someone else's local business, and then that person will be richer, and then that person might eat dinner at your restaurant. You see, the more you can keep the money in your community, the better. It makes everyone richer. At the very least, it makes people more independent. You know, you can work for multinational corporations if you want to, because you're siphoning their money by doing so. But you should be spending your money on locally made products. Products made by people who live in the city or in a nearby area. That way you're siphoning money from the elites by working for them and getting paid by them, and you're refusing to give it back to them by not buying their products, by, paying, by buying local products. You receive wages from them, but you don't buy their products, and thus you don't give their, your money back to them. This makes you richer. Now, you may think that this is unsustainable, unsustainable because it will cause businesses to go out of business, but I'll respond that any businesses that go out of business will be multinational chains, but that'll just increase the demand for locally made products that people must have, like soap, toothpaste, or whatever else. And then those people will get even richer, and then they become the new power that replaces the old evil multinational corporations. And they will be way less evil because they have not been entrenched in evil for multiple generations. Even if the new rich people are corrupted as, as the as they get much richer due to replacing multinational corporations, the new rich people will not be as corrupt as the multinational corporations before them were. And this won't happen all at once. You know, you can make your group stronger while letting everyone else carry the load for you, like the wandering tribe does. You know, just look out for your group. People who are ANCAPs, people who strongly believe in virtue, people who are brave, people who are wise, people who are disciplined, people who believe in freedom, people who believe in self-sacrifice and love and compassion for everyone, but who also believe in helping those who deserve it before they help those who might not deserve it, right? This is, this is important, I think. When you buy products from Korea or China or Japan, you're making that company more prosperous, and you're ensuring that that company can hire more of its own people. You are also making that country and that race stronger. You are also making the values of those people stronger. So by buying Chinese products, you are making communism stronger because that corporation gets richer and then pays more taxes to the communist Chinese government. You should never buy anything from any company or country that you don't agree with. But they're almost all evil. And so the only answer is to form a commune and do eugenic breeding so that you have sons and grandsons that are smart enough to start their own companies to rival and even exceed the work being done by these evil multinational corporations. Because then the no-go zone or commune will become very powerful. 
But if, on the other hand, you buy locally, if that local business grows, especially if it grows a lot because of a lot of people intentionally choosing to buy locally, then this means that this local business will get so big that it will be forced to hire more people, and then more local people will be employed, and that will be a good thing. And then those employees, who were presumably unemployed before, will have money and will be able to buy more local products, either from the business they work at or at other local businesses. And then those other local businesses, which make different products so that they're not all competing with each other, all those local businesses get bigger and then they all have to hire employees from the community. And then everyone is making products and selling to each other, and all the men are employed and everyone is making lots of sales, and no one is doing much funding of the evil multinational corporations because no one needs to buy many products from the evil multinational corporations because local businesses are very robust and successful, and thus everyone can buy almost everything they need from local businesses. And there will be greater community cohesion, and they will be able to trust each other, and they'll be able to ask favors of each other, and thus they will be able to build community cohesion even more, and will be able to help each other do the things that they need done, but which no local business does. Like, you know, maybe you need a knife sharpened, but you don't have the strength to do it, or you don't have the skill to do it, or you don't have the time to do it. Well, there's no local knife sharpening business in your town or small city, because there's not enough people who need their knives sharpened, you know, on a regular basis to support such a business. You know, like maybe he'd only get a new customer once a week or something, right? That's not enough to support a business. So there's no knife sharpening business in your town or your city, right? But maybe you know a guy who knows how to do it and is willing to do it for you. So then you just, you know, say, can you sharpen my knife? I'll pay you. And then so he sharpens your knife and then you pay him. He doesn't have a knife sharpening business, but he does you a favor and then you, it's not a favor really because you pay him. You know, so then you're helping him as if he's a local business, but he doesn't actually have to start an actual business. You know, he's work, he's functioning like a business for that particular occasion. He's doing work that you need done and you're paying him to do it. So instead of driving to a nearby bigger city to get your knives professionally sharpened by someone you don't know or, or doesn't spend money in your community and thus will not recycle that money back into your community, you instead choose to do the wiser thing and pay someone in your community to sharpen your knives for you. Then the money gets recycled back into your community and you all stay more prosperous. In the past, people naturally wanted to be cohesive like this, but they were often broken by the rich. Their cohesion was broken like a strike. And this is why frugality is so important, because it allows you to live with very little, and thus it's much harder for the elites to financially squeeze you into giving up, into breaking up your alliance with other people in your community. If they can't break your community's cohesion because of your community being so frugal, then they can't stop your prosperity creating cohesion um, they can't stop your um, prosperity creating cohesion, right? The cohesion creates prosperity, and they can't stop your cohesion um, if you're being very frugal, right? And then your cohesion and loyalty to each other makes up for the higher price of materials and stuff like that, so that you can still live well, even though you're not buying things cheaply, but are buying things expensively, all because you keep the money in the community. The Amish are super frugal, and that is why they've been able to survive and have not had to cave and they're hard workers, and they're moral, and they have cohesiveness. You know, they haven't had to start working for Walmart or anything like that. They're still able to survive all on their own, doing their own thing, having their own community. You know, why is this? Because of morality, cohesion, and frugality, and hard work. You know, they can't be broken because they're so frugal, and that gives them independence and freedom, and the ability to have their own community and their own sustainable moral culture. And that is just, that is of incalculable value. It really, really is. If only because it makes you happy. And what's the point of being alive if you're not going to be happy, right? So they have a, a huge benefit that most people don't have. They're happy. The Amish are happy. They may seem strict and severe and like they're not happy, but inside, they're actually really, really happy. But, you know, on the outside, they're strict. And that's why they're happy, because they're strict. They're morally strict. They have principles they live by, principles which keep their community alive so that they can be happy, so they can be free, so they can be uncorrupted, and so they can be, you know, not impoverished to the point that they have to give up their, you know, community and go work at Walmart, you know? And so that strictness yields huge benefits, even if it only in terms of happiness. People in the past understood the principle that I'm talking about in this video. That's why they made it a point to buy American. You know, that is to say, they bought products which said made in America, products made by American companies who employed Americans. But actually, the government should not even allow other countries to sell their products in America. Governments allowing other countries to sell their products to Americans is actually a form of treason. It actually encourages outsourcing. It breaks American lo Americans, Americans' loyalty to other Americans. 
It makes it so that Americans are not forced to be innovative and create their own companies, but can instead just rely on foreign companies to make what they need. A lot of the shit that's made in China doesn't even last. It's crap. It just breaks really easy or it's crappily made. So then you got to buy it again. It's like, what the hell, man? You're, you're enriching them for absolutely no reason. Better to pay twice as much and have it last three or four times as long. That's how we used to do it in America. We made high quality stuff that lasted fucking forever. And so it had a good reputation and so everybody bought it, including ourselves. But now we buy cheap crap from China, even though it ends up costing us more in the, in the, in the long run. And it costs us more because it means that they're getting richer because they're the ones making the money because they're the corporation and, and they're employing Chinese people as well. So, you know, we're losing money and we're not even getting jobs out of it. It's madness, you know? Uh, it's just absolute madness. You know, it should be illegal to do outsourcing. You know, that alone is reason enough to overthrow the government, that they're allowing all this outsourcing. It's literally treason. Lack of independence is slavery, and people have forgotten this. Buying foreign products makes you poor and enslaved. If you want to be prosperous and free, you need to buy local. And if you have to, buy American products which are not local, but which are not foreign either. Multinational corporations and foreign corporations should be seen as the same thing. You know, they should be seen for what they are, evil invading forces that want to destroy our lives, our prosperity, our morality, our independence, our constitutional freedoms, etc. You know, they are like, they're like landless, you know, states. They're like governments of themselves. You know, corporations are. They're super powerful and super rich. A lot of them are richer than countries. Um, also, having your own business is good and working for wages is bad. This is something that everybody in America used to know a while back. Like, I don't know, 100 years ago or something. Uh, Chomsky's talked about it more than once. Or maybe it was 150 years ago. Like, when, when everybody started having to work for wages and factories and stuff, Americans are super pissed about it. They viewed it as slavery. You know, Chomsky's talked about this in multiple videos. W watch Chomsky. You know, listen to Chomsky. I disagree with him about a lot of stuff, but I agree with him about a lot of stuff, too. He's really smart. You should listen to a lot of Chomsky videos. Um, you know, he's talked about when that switch happened. When people started working for wages, they, it was initially opposed. You know, and and then eventually they had to give into it out of necessity or something, even though they actually accurately saw that it was a form of slavery, a form of slavery worse than official slavery, because like they said at the time when everybody was objecting to wage slavery, they, they all said that, hey, slave, slavery is actually more more moral because and especially the slave owners are saying this and this is not an apologetics for slavery because slavery is bad. But like slavery is less bad than what we have now, because like, like the slave owners back then said, they said, hey, at least we take care of our slaves. We got to make sure our slaves have a roof over their head and food and are healthy. You know, these, these wage slave guys, these guys employing people for wages, they don't have to make sure that their people can live a decent standard of living or anything. You know, they don't have to make sure they're healthy or that they have a roof over their head or that they're not starving to death. They just, they just pay them a wage and, and you, hey, you got to find your own shelter and your own food and your own medicine. If you can't afford it, screw you. I don't care. Right? Like the slave owners were right in pointing out that slavery is actually more moral than wage slavery. You know, and wages, no matter what the wages are, they're basically slavery. You know, but especially when you're not getting paid great wages, you know, and especially when the job is, you know, damaging to your health or you have too long of hours or no bathroom breaks or, you know, repetitive stress injuries like carpal tunnel because they're doing the same thing over and over and over again. You know, it's just, it's not a good thing, you know. It's a, it's a really bad thing. You know, like uh, employees who pay their employees a wage do not have to care about their employees. You know, if they pay their if they pay their employee a wage, they don't have to care about them in any other way. And it's it's a bad thing, you know. Uh, if their employees can't afford an apartment or can't afford a doctor or whatever, then it's not the employer's problem and he doesn't give a shit about that employee's problem. You know, Americans need to relearn that having your own business is way better than working for somebody else. And if there were no taxation and no regulation, such as under ANCAP, then way more people would be able to have a small business that could turn a profit. Taxation makes it so that fewer people can have small businesses because lots of businesses that can only be run on small profit margins cannot be started because they cannot be profitable because of government taxation. Like, let's say if there were no taxation, um, there's some businesses that could run on a 2% profit margin or something, right? But then all you need is like, you know, 3 or 4% taxes, and that makes that that business utterly impossible. So even just tiny taxation, even just a little bit of taxation makes it so that some businesses are now impossible to run, you know? And so that's a bad thing. You know, there will be way more independent businesses, way more small businesses if there is zero taxation because then people can operate on smaller profit margins. 
they can have businesses that you know must operate on a small profit margin that you know businesses that can only be run if there's no taxation whatsoever and then more businesses means more freedom more prosperity for individuals more technological advancement more competition and thus lower prices etc cetera, etc cetera. fewer business owners means more slavery more wage slavery and more slavery to the multinational corporations and having to follow their bullshit rules and participate in their bullshit tyrannical satanist feminist statist system Buying local products means that you're supporting small businesses, and this means that this makes more small businesses. And more small businesses means weaker multinational corporations. And multinational corporations being weaker means more, more freedom, less feminist propaganda, less corporate control of government, and other benefits as well. I could be wrong, but I think that this is an area in which hippies have their heads on straight. I think a lot of hippies understand this principle about supporting local businesses and not buying products from multinational corporations, or at least avoiding buying such products as much as possible. And if you're visiting another state, you should still buy local to that area. Buy something from a small business, not from a national chain, when you're in another state. Do it for the same reason that you do it back home, to deprive the evil multinational corporations of money, to support small business owners, to support freedom, to support prosperity of regular people, and to strengthen local communities instead of the faceless powers trying to bring about a one-world government. The bigger the corporation you buy from, the more evil of a deed that you are doing. Buying from a tiny business is best. Buying from a bigger business, like a local chain, is worse. Buying from a national corporation is even worse than that, and buying from a huge multinational corporation is worst of all. Now, obviously, you know, you want to buy quality, and quality varies, and I'm not saying you should buy crap just because it's local. But if you can't find something local that is, you know, anything other than crap, uh, well, then that's a niche for you starting your own company. You know, that's your niche. If, if you can't, if you want this product and you want to buy it locally, but no one is making it locally, and or if someone's making it locally but it's terrible quality, well then boom, that's what you could start your own company making. You know, and if you live in a no-go zone that is highly moral and highly cohesive, a no-go zone in which everyone uses various kinds of sound money, well then you have a built-in market of people to buy your product already. And similarly, buy from local businesses owned by men, especially those which only employ men. But it's still better to buy locally from a virtuous woman than it is to buy a product from an evil Satanist multinational corporation. And they're basically all Satanist evil corporations. The big multinational corporations are. By buying locally, you can support only male business owners. And by doing so, you can drive women out of the workforce because only the businesses which employ men or are owned by men are growing. The female-owned businesses are going out of business and therefore women are forced to submit to men for economic reasons. Women are then forced to depend on men financially and then men get the power back the incel problem ends, patriarchy returns, sanity returns, peace returns, virtue returns, happiness returns, prosperity returns, you know, ma masculinity returns, misandric laws in the government either shrink or die, etc. And then everything, and then everything gets better, you know, but you got to start with virtue and principledness, the principledness of only buying locally whenever possible, and the virtue of frugality and politeness, and preferably the virtue of courage in forming a no-go zone as well, because then the, court, the companies in the no-go zone cannot be forced to hire women or be sued for not hiring women or for doing anything else. They can, they can hire only men, and then the U.S. won't be able to do jack shit about it, because the corporation, the company, whether they incorporate or not, the company is in the no-go zone, and the, and the government can't get, can't get anybody into the no-go zone, because... You know, there's like hundreds of thousands of people in there, or at least, you know, tens of thousands of people in the no-go zone, and they're all armed to the teeth, and they're all willing to die to keep the government out, and there's a bunch of women and kids in there too, so the government can't burn it to the ground without getting massively in huge trouble, you know, looking like monsters. So yeah, you know, just form a no-go zone and then form companies in there, and then the government won't be able to enforce its corporate bullshit on those companies, like making them hire XXers, you know? They can hire only men, and the U.S. won't be able to do jack shit about it. Buying locally is not just about defeating the evil elites. It's also about using a figurative rifle to give a headshot to feminism. This has been Redshift. I hope someone got someone out of this video, and I hope my subscribers get their shit together and start making regular videos on Red Pill topics, even if it's only one five-minute unscripted video per month. Peace.